الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We praise Him. We seek His help. We thank Him for all of the uncountable blessings that He has bestowed upon every single one of us. And we declare and we testify there is nothing and there is none worthy of our worship, our love, our fear, our hope, our dua, our prostration except for the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we bear witness that there is no being that is worthy of our unconditional obedience except for the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth and that is Allah and we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and his final messenger and perfect worshipper Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Inshallah ta'ala we will continue our discussion of Surah Taqweer Surah number 81 from the Quran. I request all of you to have your uh, uh, app open in front of you, inshallah, and try to resist the urge to get on WhatsApp or your Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media apps you have running and focus, inshallah, ta'ala, on the discussion at hand. Who remembers which ayah did we stop at last week? Anybody from the brothers? I number 13, no. Yes. I number 12 or 11. I number 12 or 11, no. Seven. Everybody's throwing numbers here and there. Okay. So we stopped at Aya number. Nine. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the innocent, the infant girl who was killed for what reason? And Allah asked that question. That for what reason was she killed? For what sin, which crime did she commit because of which she was murdered? And the parents will be questioned on judgment day. And when Allah questions somebody, subhanAllah, it is not something easy. That's why we ask Allah that He protects us from the difficulty of the questioning on judgment day. And that Allah makes us from those who enter Jannah bi ghayri hisab without any reckoning. Allahumma ameen. But for that people, we need to put in work. We need to put in extremely hard work to get that blessing and that sharaf from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, moving on, ayah number 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ What is the translation of this, O people? Anybody read it out loud? Brothers or sisters, anybody? Okay, so what and when the suhuf and suhuf is the plural of sahifa. Okay, so when all of these books of deeds shall be laid open, shall be laid bare. And the word nushira demands some attention from us. Nushira comes from nashara, nashara anshara, which means to spread out and brought to life. Now how interesting is this description that Allah is saying? He's not just saying that your and my book of deeds will be out open to read, but along with that, Allah is saying it's as though it has come to life. And what will make it come to life? Don't you and I as parents, inshallah ta'ala, all of you have read storybooks to your children, inshallah. I know some fathers sometimes they don't do that. but if you've read any type of book to your toddler child, what do you try to do when you're reading that book? Do you just read it in a monotone voice and just so there was a boy, he went to the jungle, and in the jungle, he went, uh, uh. is that how you read it? Or how do you read it? You read it, loudly and clearly through. And what do you try to do? The characters contained in the book, you try to bring them to life. That's the point I'm trying to get at. Okay? You try to make it interesting. You try to bring it to life. Now it is a similar imagery that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing for us in this particular ayah. 
no shirat. That when you and I will see our book of deeds, it's as though it has come alive. And to add to that effect, what did Allah tell us elsewhere in the Quran? That what's going to happen? That our skins shall speak. Our limbs will bear test testimony to what we did. Our feet shall speak. Our eyes will speak. How will they speak? Wallahu a'lam. Some people have tried to interpret this and say, you know what? So what kind of... Will the eyes have a small tiny mouth and you know a pair of lips and tongue and how is it going to speak? We don't ask all of that question. It's a waste of time to ask those questions. Take the guidance that the Quran says that our limbs, our body parts will speak on Judgment Day and will bear witness to what you and I did. So what is a suhuf nushirat and it will be spread out your and my encyclopedias of deeds in front of the people and it will be brought to life. Another meaning is, bringing to life is, something that somebody would have thought, you know, it's something long past. Who remembers this kind of stuff, right? We usually say this to people. When something is discussed from the past, we say, who remembers that man? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers. Every single detail Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers. Surah 18, Surah Kahf that we are encouraged to recite every single day. What do we read there? That on that day when the books are given, the uh, people who transgressed Allah's boundaries, what will they say? They will say, what kind of book is this? That this book brings forth, this book contains every single thing. It doesn't leave anything behind. Kabira aw sagira. Whether it is big or whether it is small, on top of that, illa ahsaha. With numbers. How many times did I smoke? How many times did I speak filth? How many times did I disobey my parents? How many times did I speak badly with my acquaintance? How many times was I rude with my spouse? Every single thing with numbers of Allah. This is what this book is, O Muslims. This is what this book is. So the word suhuf, we understand, it's not just one scroll. Now the translation is perhaps in your apps, it says scrolls, right, or books. So it is books upon volumes upon volumes of deeds. I number 11, وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ كُشِيْقَتْ What's the translation, people? And when the sky will be stripped off. When the sky shall be stripped off. Now, none of us can ever fathom the sky. How can this roof above us, the canopy above us, ever be ruptured? We never, we, we can't even imagine such a sight, can we? How is it going to look like? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it will be stripped. And the word kushiqat from kashapa or kashapa, which means to peel something. Like you have your banana and you peel that banana. You have a clementine, a tangerine, and then you peel that. That is the imagery Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing here. And we find a similar ayah or many such ayat in the Quran from them. Surah Rahman, Surah 55, ayah 37. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in this particular ayah? وَإِذَا شَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ Yes, Ahnaf, go ahead. فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the skies that day will be stripped or ripped open and it will look like وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَا Like a rose-colored red ointment. That's how the sky will look like. And subhanAllah, this color that we find in Surah Rahman, some of the scholars, they explain, well, the word kushiqat from kashapa means to skin a dead animal. When an animal has been slaughtered properly, an animal is dead, and now you take off the skin, correct? So that you can start cutting up the animal in different portions. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to us what? That the sky will look as if this animal, when you skin it, what do you find underneath the skin? What color? Yes. Red. Red. So that is the color of this sky. It will be 
red in color. It will have this red color once it's peeled off. Now, some people have tried to give it other interpretations as well, and that is that on in this dunya, what color does the sky have? What color? Blue. Why is it blue? Light blue. Light blue. Why? Why is it this color? It's, it's because of uh, very, very far. So our eye limitation is finished, so it's just blue. Okay. I know it's been a long time since all of us left elementary school, so we don't remember, but elementary school, remember? Ahnaf, maybe you will help us. Why is the sky blue in color? It is reflecting, which, why is it reflecting blue color? Oh, it's reflecting the sun. Water? The sun, water, exactly. Mashallah. We do remember uh, grade two, grade five, grade three stuff. Okay, exactly. Because of the color of the seas and the oceans. Okay? So on that day, what color is this dunya that the sky is reflecting red? The color, what is happening in this dunya? All the ocean will uh, change into flame. Into flame. Right. Okay? And we'll come to that. We're coming to that. So, you will find that in other surahs in Juz Amma. The وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ Okay? When the oceans and the seas are set ablaze, so what color will the sky reflect? Nothing but red. SubhanAllah. Such imagery Allah is drawing in front of us. Let us not think there will be an easy day. Oh, it's okay. I don't pray five times a day. I don't give the zakah. It's okay. SubhanAllah. What are the things that we're involved in? What are the things that we're keeping ourselves busy with? And what are the things that we should prioritize in life? Our own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our own good deeds. Our deeds that will matter most on Judgment Day. And <coughs> 12. Translation please. Jahannam ko bhargaya In English. When he, when the hell will be the ablaze? Will be set ablaze, will be set alight. So on Judgment Day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Jaheem will be su'irat. Jaheem, we'll come to that in a little bit. The fire of hell will be su'irat, set ablaze, and the fire will be roaring. And it will be towering and rising even higher than it already is. SubhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in an authentic hadith that the fire of hell was burned for how many years people? Who remembers that hadith? The fire of hell was burned for 1,000 years until its color initially was the Prophet, I'm trying to recall the hadith, the color was a certain color, the Prophet describes it. Then it was burned again for another thousand years and then the color changed until it was burned for another thousand years and then the color became black okay so when we see that Allah says that it will be it will be set alight does it mean that Jahannam is now a place of coolness that there is no fire burning and the answer is no this is a way in which Allah is saying on that day Jahannam will take yet another dimension of its anger, another dimension of its burning. And this is very interesting, why? Because in Surah 50, Surah Qaf, Allah describes Jahannam as speaking. So Jahannam has a life. Jahannam is a living, breathing monster. You and I think of Jahannam as a place just like, you know, it's a cellar or maybe like an oven and it's burning. No, 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 Jahannam talks, SubhanAllah. And that will be when we come to Surah Qaf, inshallah ta'ala, one day. So I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about some of the names of Jahannam. And this is from an article that I read over a decade ago, subhanAllah. And Allah bless the sister who actually did all of this research, mashallah. So she talks about, and this is from a scholarly work of Shaykh uh, Ibn Arsaymin, rahmanullah, uh, in which he discusses the names of hellfire in the Quran. The names of hellfire. So what are some of the names that all of you are aware of? Let's hear them out. The names of Jahannam. 
Nobody knows any names of Jahannam in the Quran. Jahannam has been called by different names. Habia. Habia. What? Habia. No, I've never heard that. So there's Jahim. Then there is Jahannam. Then there is Nag. There is Hotama. Okay, these are all names. Uh, Jews 30 that we're talking about. Hutama means the crusher, that which crushes. That is Hutama. So every name that Allah uses of Jahannam gives a certain layer of the meaning behind Jahannam and what Jahannam is about. So the first two names that we'll talk about, inshallah, are Jannah, sorry, Jahannam and Jahim. What are the names? Jahannam and Jahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the word Jahannam in the Quran 77 times. And it is from Jim, Ha, and Mim, and contains many, many meanings. The literal meaning of which is to meet with a frowning face and a stern look. This is the literal meaning of Jahannam. When you look at a person who has Jaham, you become fearful. So a person's face in the Arabic language can have Jaham. And Jaham means he has such a frowning, such a terrifying look on their face. This is what the literal meaning of Jahannam is. The second meaning of Jahannam is darkness. And Jahannam is used for the darkest part of the night. And when you and I are sometimes flung into pitch blackness, sometimes when you're driving perhaps, driving through you know, some of those roads, don't you get a sense of a bit of fear in your heart? You're like, I don't know, I pray, I pray, I pray my, my uh, car doesn't break down here. There's no, maybe my cell phone signal is out, and there's even, you know, uh, the street lights are out. So what's going on, right? You're not gonna keep getting candies out of it. So, uh, darkness, a type of darkness that scares you. From the meanings of Jahannam is a waterless cloud. A cloud that contains no water, that a person sees this cloud and thinks that maybe there's water contained in it, but it's absolutely without water. So when you put all of these meanings together, Jahannam, the meaning of Jahannam therefore becomes a place when you look at it, you're scared. Good. You want to run away and stay away from it because it has that frowning look and it is waterless. When Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran about the disbelievers, فَحَسْبُهُ Jahannam, Then Jahannam is sufficient for him, for the disbeliever for the person who, re uh, who, who rebelled against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what they deserve. A waterless, scary, dark punishment that will break their ego and their arrogance. And by the way, let's not make any mistakes about it. And you've heard me repeat this, and inshallah ta'ala, I'll keep repeating it. Let's not think this only for the kafir and the mushrik. Muslims will also be subjected to jihad. And may Allah protect us from them. And a person shouldn't feel so confident, oh, you know, we're Muslims, we're Muslims, you know, we're going to Jannah. No, no, no. We hope and we pray, inshallah ta'ala, we go into Jannah, but even Muslimin will enter Jahannam. The meaning of Jahim, therefore, Jahim appears 23 times in the Quran, and it is from Jim, Ha, and Mim, and contains many, many meanings, just like the uh, first word, Jahannam. Of those meanings are to light and stir up a fire. You add fuel upon fuel upon fuel for the fire to keep burning. That you don't want the fire to go out because of lack of fuel. The word jahama means to stare with sharp eyes and refers to the way a hungry lion stares at its prey. This is how jahannam or the word jahim in this case, Allah is saying it will stare at the people who are about to enter it. And that's why in the Quran, when Allah talks about at the end of Surah 25, Surah Furqan, Allah is saying these people will hear the roaring of the fire of hell before entering the fire of hell. So they're already 
tasting the punishment before entering the punishment. How scary is that? That before they've entered the fire of hell, already the roaring and the frightful, the sounds that they are hearing, subhanAllah. Kind of like I'm sure how we've experienced. If you hear a terrifying sound coming from a certain direction, are you going to go in that direction? Of course not. You won't. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, teaching us the meanings of these words. Now the word ajham comes from the same root and it means someone who has red eyes. Something that we'll call bloodshot eyes. This is from the meanings of jahim. So jahim is also used to mean a pit with a blazing fire. And not just any fire, but an extremely hot and an extremely intense and fiercely burning fire. This is what Jahim refers to. So next time if Shaytan comes to us and says, you know what? Commit this sin, it's okay. Allah is awful Rahim, seek his forgiveness. No. Tell yourself, remind yourself of these meanings of Jahannam. The next name of Jahannam that we'll talk about is Saqaf. Saqar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah 54, ayah number 48. يَوْمَ يُسْحَبُونَ فِي فِي النَّارِ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ ذُوْقُ مَسَّ سَقَرْ Surah Qamar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the day that they will be dragged on their faces into the fire of hell. And it will be said to them, ذُوْقُ مَسَّ سَقَرْ Taste, okay, thank you. Taste the touch of saqar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say as a form of punishment. So the word yushabuna not only means to drag something, but it means to drag someone out of disgrace and to humiliate somebody. The criminals on that day will be dragged on their faces and the most honorable of their bodies, it will be said to them. Because what's the most honorable part of our bodies, people? The face. And they will be dragged upon the face. And it will be said to them, Zuku masasakar, taste you the mas the touch of saqar. Now, the word uh, masa saqar, it gives you the connotation that meaning taste of perceiving and experiencing something slowly. So how is this different from akala, to eat something, as opposed to taste something? How is it different? It is said that tasting refers to a small amount, correct? That's why I would have been done. None of us do that. But wine tasting, you hear that all the time. Now I go around the park, and then you know those uh, wineries that they have there, and the, you know they say, oh, wine tasting festival and stuff like that. So they're not going to drink barrels and barrels of bottles and bottles of wine. They'll be tasting teaspoons. Um, and even when it comes to you know all those culinary shows, and you've got these chefs, um, when it's time to taste, they don't finish an entire, you know, mashallah, tray of biryani. They don't do that. They just take. One, uh, one teaspoon or one spoon, and that's it. So what does this mean when Allah says, ذُوْقُوا مَسَّ in this ayah of Surah Qamar? Allah is saying that the fire will taste these people, and they will endure the pain of the fire of saqar in a slow and painful manner. And Allah protect us, subhanAllah. Look at yet another meaning we're getting as to the torture of Hellfire. Just where? How did we get that? From the meaning or from the word Saqqa. The other meanings of Saqqa is or are extreme heat that will cause alteration in the complexion of the skin. And people who have experienced sunburn, they'll know this. And especially those of you who Allah is blessed to go for Hajj or Umrah, I'm sure when you're wearing your ihram, things like that happen that your shoulders is sunburned. And then there is extreme heat that will cause pain. And this happened, I'm sure, on June 30th, I know the hottest day here in Canada, I was moving, subhanAllah. And that day with AC blasting in my car and all that, I was having a headache, subhanAllah. So a kind of heat that causes pain to come about. So the literal definition of saqar is that it is extremely hot, the heat of which melts, it changes the properties, the nature, the appearance of something. And in particular, changes the surface of something, the skin of something. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Dathir, Surah 74, Ayah 27, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا سَقَرْ And what will make you know what is saqar? لَا تُبْقِي وَلَا تَذَرْ It spares not, nor does it leave. لَا تُبْقِي وَلَا تَذَرْ Want to know about saqar? It's not going to leave something raw. <coughs> MashaAllah, it's the summer time. You've all barbecued. So when you're barbecuing on your coals, or maybe it's your gas uh, barbecue that you have, sometimes this side of the kebab or that side of your chicken is left undone and you have to go back and put it on the coals. Saqar is something la dubaqi wa la tadab. It's not going to leave any part. The smallest part, it's not going to spare it, nor is it going to leave it. Saqar does not let anything behind. Everything that goes into saqar is burnt up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Lawa hatul lil bashar burning and blackening the skins. So this saqar is lawaha. And laha is when skin darkens due to exposure to heat, to fire, and from hard work and from thirst. And this is what happens. And saqar will do this to those who enter it. Then Allah finally says, alayha tis'ata ashar. And upon it are 19. Upon it are 19 angels, stern and strong, who do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was a little tidbit into the different words with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jahannam in the Quran. So we talked about Jahannam, the name Jahannam. We talked about Jahim. We talked about Saqqa. So here in ayah number 12, let's come back to our surah that we're discussing, surah Taqweem. وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ The word Jahim is used, and what is the meaning of Jahim? And this is what happens when you don't take down notes. You just keep listening and falling asleep. What is the meaning of Jahim? Is it hellfire? Yes, it is. But what does it mean? It means something that will stare at you with sternness. Something that will stare with so much anger in it, like a lion stares at its prey, and to have bloodshot red eyes, okay? So to look at it is scary, it is frowning, it is angry. That is what Jahim means. Moving on to ayah number 13, Allah says, وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hardly you'll find mention of Allah's torture, Allah's anger, Allah's punishment, and Jahannam, except that right after you'll see mention of Jannah. Like one of my teachers said, you have the mention of fire, and right after that you'll see mention of the fire exit. How you can exit from that situation. So Allah says, What is a Jannah to Uslifat? Meaning, please? And when, when the paradise and when Jannah, paradise, will be brought near. Uzlifat. So paradise right now. You see, some people think that Jannah and Jahannam are not yet in existence. They will be created on that day. And the answer is no. Right now, as we speak, Jannah and Jahannam exist. They exist. Alright? So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already telling us in the previous surah we saw وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاظِرَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَ And that is surah Qiyamah, excuse me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the previous surah that faces that they shall be radiant and they will be laughing. They will be laughing. ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبِشِرًا Because of the good news that has come to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this Jannah as it's coming close, what do you think the good doers Insha'Allah ta'ala, may Allah make you and me from them. Allahumma ameen. What will happen when you're seeing that paradise all of your life that you believed in, that you toiled towards, that you gave up so many of the temptations of this dunya for this Jannah, when Jannah is being brought close, what do you think the reaction will be? You'll be smiling. You'll be laughing. You'll be looking forward to it, and that is why we saw Allah Hikatun Mustabishiran in Surah Abasa, the previous surah. 
here in Surah Taqweer, we are saying that these people, Allah is giving the explanation of yet another reason for their happiness. Why? Because they are seeing Jannah being brought close. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, you can go and wash your hands. So Allah is honoring the believers by bringing Jannah close to them. As though in this dunya, like an award ceremony. When an award ceremony is taking place, you see the person who's going to get his or her certificate, they're going to get a prize, they're going to get a cup, or whatever. They see it close by, right? The stadium, whatever sports you are uh, you know, um, affiliated with, whether it's cricket, whether it's soccer, whether it's basketball, whatever. When it's time to give the cup, when it's time to give the trophy, is a trophy cap, you know, a thousand kilometers away? No, it's right there in the stadium, subhanAllah. It's like an award ceremony. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors the believer for the hardship that the believers endured in this dunya. For all of the difficulties, for all of the things, the sacrifices that they made for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayah number 14. Alimat nafsum ma ahbarat. Translation, please. Excellent. So every nafs will know what it has brought forward. Alimat from ilm. Alimat. That they will have knowledge, every person will have knowledge. Ma ahbarat of what they have brought forth, what they have put forward. Every human being will look and see the things that they have sent forth. It's like every single day, O Muslims, we have an opportunity to submit our deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single one of us. We have this opportunity to submit our deeds and we are submitting it every day. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, and please say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, on Mondays and Thursdays, deeds are lifted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet said, I wish and I hope that my deeds are lifted to Allah while I am in a state of fasting. That's why the sunnah of fasting Mondays and Thursdays. So a person will see all of the days that they lived in this dunya, they kept on submitting. I am submitting my deeds. You are submitting your actions every single day. And all of that is being marked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is being checked and graded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that day, the human being will see what he put forth. Ahbarat from habbara, which means to be present somewhere. Like the Urdu term hazir, to be present. So when you take something for presentation, correct? Then this is the word that is used, ahbarat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this exam that you are taking in this world, after all, what is this dunya, people? It's nothing but an examination room, an examination where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all of the cheat sheets, Allah has given us all of the questions. Allah has given us all of the answers. So subhanAllah, how can a person possibly fail this exam? Have you ever seen a professor who says that I'm going to give you an open book exam? So that is true. I had a professor in university, open book exam. In fact, when I lived in Houston, Rice University, one of the, we can call it the quote, quote unquote, Ivy League universities in southern US, uh, all exams there are open book, all exams. But those exams, students would say that we would prefer closed book exams. Because number one, the exams are open book. Number two, no time frame. You have to complete the exam in 30 minutes, in two hours, in three hours. No, 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 no. Take as much time as you want. That's why they are extremely difficult, extremely conceptual. That's how the exams are. But still look at the point. It's open book. But do you know the questions beforehand? No, you don't. But with Allah, it's open book, and you know the questions. And Allah has said, these are the answers. And the answers are such that this answer will get you 100 out of 100. This, exam, this answer will get you 80 out of 100, 90 out of 100. 
and you want to do above this, then I have bonus and bonus and bonus. You want to get bonus? Then even those answers I've left it for you. Still the human being, why is it that he chooses to fail the exam? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, may Allah guide us, may Allah give us wisdom. Because then it's only the foolish who does not take all of these uh, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayah number 15, we're going to end in about 5 minutes inshaAllah. So just hang in there, fight your sleep inshaAllah. فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ Allah says, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ Please tell me the meaning of this. Allah says, Fala of Zimu bin Hunas, sister, can you speak loudly? Excellent. I swear Allah is taking a qasam. Fala of Zimu. Allah takes an oath. Fala of Zimu bin Hunas. Hunas means the planets that appear at night and disappear during the day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by these majestic bodies, that these celestial bodies. This massive, huge creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah takes an oath by them. Why though? You see, the reason is that the disbelievers, remember this is a Makkah surah, and it's talking to the people of that time as it's talking to people of all times. They had all of these superstitious beliefs, and they believed in astrology. One of the things that they believed in was that uh, the movement of the planets, the movement of the stars, dictate if I should get married, or dictates if I should get into a business, and all that, and may Allah forgive us, Muslims have also fallen prey to this. I mean, some of the things you see people, they wear certain rings, right? This is my stone, this is my birthstone. And if I wear it, then it's gonna bring good luck, if I don't wear it, it's gonna bring bad luck. Oh, look at what did you just do? You just made a mini god out of this stone. Oh, look Why? You've reduced Allah's qudrah, Allah's power, that Allah is ala kulli shayin qadir. And you've made what? Your stone, kulli shayin qadir? A'udhu billah. And these are manifestations of shirk, that affect the ummah to this day. So the Arabs, they saw the stars twinkling. And when they would see this twinkling of the stars, they would think that these are certain signals that I'm getting. And when there is a comet, a meteorite, a falling star, in quotes, when you see that you know, streak across the sky, all of us have seen that, they would either make an interpretation of good luck or bad luck. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ That I am taking an oath by these stars. And Allah is taking an oath to tell them that these stars that you are believing in, that there is a creator of these stars that causes them to move in a certain manner and causes them to appear and causes them to disappear. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ He's also refuting the beliefs that were rampant during the time of the Prophet sallallahu al is a plural of uh, khanis. And this means someone who is going on a path. Then they hide behind something so they're hidden from view. And then you see them again and then they hide again. So this is the person who tries to hide and show itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ Those things that appear and they disappear. الْجَوَارِ kunnas. Translation please. Hmm? Go straight or hide. Correct. It's the continuation of the discussion of these celestial bodies and by the planets that move swiftly and hide themselves. Al Jawar. Jawar from Jara or Jawran, it means to veer off the path. 
So if somebody is on a highway and they veer off that highway, so this is what this idea is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these shooting stars that you see and these jinns that come to you and give you all of these messages, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all of this, there is a controller behind them. And that controller is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then ayah number 17, Allah says, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا عَسْعَسْ The meaning please? And by the night when it darkens. Look at the progression in the surah. Allah is talking about our deeds. He's talking about the unseen world. He's talking about things that will take place on Judgment Day. And now he brings our attention to things of this physical, observable world around us that Allah tells us about the akhirah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of the physical things. So he's talking about the planets, he's talking about the stars, he's now talking about the night. And look at the night when it darkens. وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ And by the morning when it breathes. I swear by the morning when it تَنَفَّسْ When it takes a breath. In other words, Allah is saying the night is choking. It's like something that causes the vision to become limited. SubhanAllah, look at all these crimes also happen in the darkness of the night. And all these evil things happen at night. But during the day, it's like a breath of fresh air. So Allah is saying, وَإِذَا subihi or وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ And when the morning takes a breath. All Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing and taking oaths for because he's building up to something. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ That all of this Qur'an that you're hearing, these majestic things that Allah has taken an oath by, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ That this is truly the word of a noble messenger. Kareem, noble and honorable. قَوْل قَوْل meaning that which is said. That which is said. When someone else uses words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this Qur'an that you have in front of you, this Qur'an is from a noble, a noble messenger. Inshallah ta'ala will end here and we'll continue our discussion next week inshallah. So remember, we stopped at ayah number 19. There's a little bit of discussion that uh, we need to do, but time is of the essence. If you have any questions, please ask me. questions? <coughs> no questions? Okay, so here's the hadith that I mentioned and I talked about. Abu Huraira narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, hadith in the Muwatta of Imam Malik and Sunan al-Tirmidhi or the Jami'ah of Imam al-Tirmidhi, hell had been lit, burnt for 1,000 years until its flames became red. 
Again, it was heated for another thousand years until its color became white. Still again, it was burned for further 1,000 years and its white color flames turned pitch black. This is Jahannam. And again, it's just to give somewhat of an idea. These are matters of unseen. We don't know. So it was red, red to white, and white to black. And that is the color of Jahannam. Whether you need any help, we'll help you out.